All right, welcome back to Fuck It Talks, the podcast, episode 88. Today on this show, what are trans people doing in our bathrooms and our military? Hint, it's weird sex shit. Then, affirmative action finally got lifted by the Supreme Court. Time to see those LSAT scores, Michelle Obama. <laughs> then after that, we do some reparations calculations, and you won't believe who owes who money. And last but not least, we have a guess what happens next section that you're not going to want to miss. All this and more is Fuckus Talks, a podcast, episode 88, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And action speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. What the Stocks the Podcast featuring Richard Bradbury. All right. One for one on the intro, as always. Guys, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Undertack. You guys know me. I am a person who enjoys their comfort. That's why I'm always wearing hoodies and baggy basketball shorts. And I've taken that comfort level to my underwear as well. That's why I wear Undertack, the most comfortable boxers I have ever worn in my entire life. I am not just saying that because they're sponsoring the show. It is actually true. Undertack is made with Modal, which is basically a cotton on steroids. It's 50% more moisture wicking. It's antimicrobial, and it's super stretchy and super comfortable. Uh, The waistband is stretchy and nice, doesn't bunch up on you. And the best part is it's 30% less expensive than the underwear you're probably wearing right now. They're my absolute favorite. They sponsor the show. They support us. So let's support them right back. We all wear underwear. Why not buy underwear from a company that has your patriotic America first values? Undertack.com is the website. Use code FLECUS20 for 20% off site-wide. And last but not least, Undertag donates a portion of all sales to veteran-run organizations that fight human trafficking. That is called a full 360 win. Undertag.com is the website. FLECUS20 is the code for 20% off. Go get a pair of Undertag underwear today. I promise you will not regret it. All right, let's get into housekeeping. Nice. That was a true one for one. Yeah, true one for one. And did it sound good? Yeah, you started slow, but it got it got there. I got it. Yeah, it's called I got it done. I almost interjected there. For what were you gonna say? <laughs> Michelle Obama thing, like ooh, but I just never do that, so I, I don't know why. Um. All right. <laughs> Thank you to our sponsors. Uh, welcome to the show, episode eighty-eight. We are back from our break, episode eighty-eight, the Benick episode. Nice. You remember Benick from high school? Yeah, of course. The Benick, get over here. Whatever. <laughs> that was full free. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Benick was my best friend in high school. Um, my Richard Rapboy before Richard Rapboy. Nice. We used to hang out every weekend. I'd pick him up in my mom's car, and we would go to the post office parking lot in town, and we would just post up and hang out. Times were good. Yeah. And then one time I was driving him home, and I got a big gulp. We both got big gulps, but the soda machine was broken that day. So I was just like, oh, this, <laughs> this soda's fucked. And I just threw it out the window, but the window was closed and it hit the thing and it went all over him. It just completely covered him. Yeah, nice. So, nice. Shout out to Benick. Yeah, best go. friend in high school, still watches. He watches the show. So Good. we're still technically best friends. Yep. Benick. Yep. Um, all right. Let's get into some action. Let's just do some quick doppelgangers because we don't do them anymore. We have some really quick, fast ones. No big deal. Fleckus is the dog. A lot of people sent me this. Multiple people sent like me this. Haircut? Apparently, that's me. You look really handsome today. I kind of get it. Yeah, I There's get it There's a too. time where that beard does that. Yeah, 100%. So that's not a lie. Um, and then we have the uh, Richard Ratboy sat in some chair, some tree chair. Yep, here it is. Tree swing. Oh. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> My mom sent me that, and I was like, looks exactly like Richard. And yeah. She's like, I know. Yeah. Um, and then there's the last one. You're on a TV show. Which one? The country guy? Yeah, you're on like some WB show, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like I'm uh, this Nashville guy. Hey, honestly, yeah, you're better than that guy. I know. I, I like when I see like doppelgangers who I can actually, I'm better than slightly. Yeah, so you're I better mean, than that guy. That feels good. What about this one? Oh, yeah, I found this <laughs> online. That looks exactly like you, too. But yep. you're better than that kid, too. Exactly. And then you know what? Here's one. You're better than this guy. Thank you. So I don't even see it at all. Hey, this cut... This uh-huh. haircut and beard cut is jarring. 
Oh, is yeah. audience, are you, is, is this crazy? It's called went on vacation, took a vacation <laughs> from myself too. I saw him, he came out and I thought he was just buzzing his hair right before he was leaving for uh, Martha's Vineyard. And he came out with the beard gone. And I was like the kid who's seeing their dad with the beard shaved for the first time. It, it yeah. shocked me. So. Yeah. It looked bad. Yeah. It was a mistake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are you still regretting it? Or? Oh, of course. Okay. I had something going for me with that hair. The fro it was actually cooler than I realized. And then my beard was at a nice length. And then I just buzzed it all. I know. I was sh- shocked. It didn't make sense to me, but mm, hey, made a decision, went with it. Living with it. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Hello, everybody. Did you miss us? Yeah. I got a lot of messages. You guys missed us. I missed the show. Me too. I had a lovely family vacation. And a lot of stuff happened. Like, and a lot of stuff happened. In between our day Yeah, we off. picked a bad week to take a vacation. <laughs> but I had a lovely trip. I went to Martha's Vineyard with my family. I caught a fish. I saw a nice beach. Laid in this hammock. It was good. Typical vacation. I had a stuff. couple favorite parts. You want to hear my favorite parts? Sure. And least favorite parts? Sure. Well, least favorite parts easy. It's just when you have to take all your furniture back from the beach, or you have to pack up all your shit. Yeah. That's the and the walk back, and then like you're the like one of the more capable guys of the group. There's like women and children there. Oh yeah, they so you pack have to, like, it on. Carry everything, and you just get up the stairs, and you're just like, ooh. Didn't think I was sweating before dinner. Oh, but here we are. So that happened a lot. My favorite part of the whole trip, mm-hmm. I have two. One, I'm sitting in the beach chair next to my mom under an umbrella, and my dad and my niece, so my dad and his granddaughter, are, who's four years old, are walking like 50 yards away, and there's a huge rock, and on the rock, there's one of those kerns or kerns, whatever they're yeah, called, yeah. the rock stack things. Hippie rock piles. The hippie rock piles that we're all knocking over. And I see it from really far away, and my dad's walking with his granddaughter and just knocks Sweat. it over, <laughs> just pops it over. And I was like, yes. Then he turns around and looks back, and I was like, you did it. <laughs> so that was great. And then um, with my niece, I was making a necklace with her with some shells she found. Yeah. She's like, oh, I want to make a necklace. And I thought it would be so funny, and it was. We used, like, the most gross stuff. We used, like, a skate egg. We used a dead crab. <laughs> and then, like, a conch shell that had like an animal in it yeah going around showing it to everybody it's like, oh yeah mommy <laughs> put on my necklace i'm not gonna take this off all vacation it's like <laughs> all right so that was really funny um another funny part of vacation which i should include um uh, i stayed in my a house with my parents we rented a house um they were they they, they paid for it It was very nice yeah. free vacation for fleckus feels good mm-hmm. um and then the airbnb host like left them a little note and the Airbnb host was like a gay guy, like yeah. a two gay guys in Martha's Vineyard. And they were leaving a little note that was like describing the house and like all the things they love. And it was, <laughs> it got kind of like, there was like, oh, you know, we, we love, you know, a cozy night on the love seat in the garden, enjoying some wine at sunset. Highly recommend that. We have a lot of memories there. Yeah. And it's like, stay out of the garden. Yeah, pull out the black light. <laughs> no one go in the garden. <laughs> It's like, oh, lots of great memories in the jacuzzi. It's like, no one in the jacuzzi. (laughs) Yeah, flush it, flush it, new water. (laughs) No one in the jacuzzi. (laughs) Um, But that was basically it. We had a great time, great vacation, caught fish, saw my family, took a week off from the show. July 4th, hot dogs, hamburgers, bratwurst, pizza. Refreshed. I'm back. I'm back. That's exactly what I needed. Arnold Palmer's BLTs, exactly what I needed. It's called Just What I Needed. There you go. Got it? Yeah. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Understood. Uh, do you have any highlights from when you had a week off? No, nothing really. I actually tried to eat well. It was kind of like a staycation where I was uh, eating well, running. I was exercising every day, and it was hot here, so mm. uh, it got bad. But hung out with friends who are still here and uh, enjoyed my time off. It's nice to get a break. Yeah. It's nice to get a break, too, from each other. Yeah. We hang out a lot. We hang out a lot. So get a little break. We come back refreshed. Get a little break. Come back refreshed. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> it's called get a little break. You come back refreshed. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's move on. While we were gone, we got some great shout outs. We had this announcement at this BMX race in Pennsylvania. That is just one of the better ones we've ever seen. Also, Lakeshore BMX, while we have a second, every Friday, there's this wonderful podcast that comes out called Fleckus Talks. It's rated the best new <laughs> podcast of all times. And Lakeshore BMX, if you're interested in hearing about Rob Smith and Ceviche and just what's going on in the world, why don't you give it a listen? Clapping? (laughs) Crazy. (laughs) Madman move. That's the kind of stuff we need. That's how you get a whole bundle of merch sent to you. Did you already do it? Yeah. Big package sent to that guy. Smart. Huge. Also, we got our first Snarf Snarf O'Banion hit. Um, As everyone knows, 
we are trying to get things named either Snarf Snarf O'Banion or Snarf Snarf, or if that's too weird, Rob Smith seems like a reasonable name. Yeah, that's an average name. So we're trying to get everything we can named that. Um, and we actually got our first one, a guy who watches the show. He owns a media production company and he got a fr- his van and he named it Snarf Snarf O'Vanion. Very tasteful. And he's Blue Jay Media. Uh, I think he's in Arizona. Yeah. Right. We'll and put so, a link to his thing. Yeah. So he got a sprinter van. So I guess uh, if he needs Google reviews, why don't we hit him? Right. Yeah. Or. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll link him and we'll leave some Google reviews for him and see if that's what they're looking for. Or if not, we'll just link his Instagram. Yeah, and- yeah, no, no, their video production service in Phoenix, Arizona, 4.8 stars with 30 reviews. Let's pump those numbers. Let's pump those numbers. And that'll be our business for the week. And that'll be our business for the week. We usually do that at the end of the show. We shout out a patriotic business, but we'll do it in the housekeeping this time. Yeah. Links in the description. Follow them on Instagram and give a good Google review. You guys are the best at that. Um, and you're kind of probably wondering... Are we satisfied? I said that's what I said. I said, "Oh, good, the monkey's off his back. We'll stop doing random ones and no, trying to get him." It's actually worse because now I know it's possible. He's emboldened. <laughs> and now I just need more. Yeah. So we're not satisfied. We're going to keep it going. All right, we have to keep it moving. Um, over this past week, American legend Joey Chestnut saved the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Yeah, he came out in the rain. And then they canceled it originally, and then Joey Chestnut's like, nah, we're going to do it outside if you cancel it. So then everyone was like, uh, all right, we're going to do it. It's not canceled. So he saved the whole thing. Um, pure Americana. Pure Americana. The guy is the same guy who chokehold wrestled that guy a couple years ago doing the uh, climate protest. Yeah. I don't know if we can even show any of this because that's ESPN, right? Oh, is it? Nathan's, they might get us. But you guys all know Joey yeah. Chestnut. We all know Joey Chestnut. We all know what happens. I will say this. The Nathan's hot dog eating contest probably started off as like a nice American spirit. Oh, the guy down the street, 15 Frankfurters. Yeah, Michael Michael from Coney Island, 812. (laughs) Gee Willikers. And now it got a little disgusting. And now he's dipping it in water. (laughs) (laughs) Just slurping it. It got a little bit. They took it a little too far. Yeah. They kind of ruined it. They kind of extrapolated and it got gross. Well, it's it's basically turned into like the steroid league. Like, I want to see the peak of human, like what they can shove in their mouth. So it's almost reached its end game. I don't think there will be another guy ever like Joey Chestnut. Yeah, it already expanded and now it's Joey Chestnut types only. You can't go a level above that. I have a little Joey Chestnut antidote Mm -hmm. that I saw. Um, Joey Chestnut was doing some like YouTube video where it was like him eating three burgers versus one guy eating one burger. Mm -hmm. And he goes before it. It's like, Joey, you think this guy has a chance? And he goes, no, he's got a little baby mouth. So he's analyzing. He's like sizing up someone's (laughs) mouth. Like that's what a competitive eater is looking at. So I thought that was interesting. Stuff you wouldn't even think about. I know. Um, All right. July 4th happened, obviously, earlier this week. The hot dog eating contest. Also a great chance for Bud Light to maybe redeem themselves. Redeem themselves a little bit. I was telling my dad on vacation, I was like, the only way Bud Light could actually redeem themselves and get people to purchase Bud Light uh-huh. would be if they said, hey, for July 4th, 100% of our sales will go to veterans. Yeah. People would go buy Bud Light and they would get rid of that thing in their brain of never buy Bud Light. And then the next day it would trickle over. People would still buy it. They kind of would kind of go back to normal, I think. I actually don't know. I think that might be too late, like just gimmick, you know, and people would be like, eh, fuck you. But and, imagine I, you I, buy all the Bud Light and put them out of business. I, I get your point. I get your point. <laughs> but like that is what they had to do. would be something like that where it's like we're losing money. It's all going to the veterans. Like we are very sorry. Yeah. And instead they sponsored a stage at the Pride event. Yeah. And they have, look at this person. This is what they have going on on the Bud Light stage. Fat twink pig shit, tits are out. Yeah. Just not the, the worst art you've ever seen. And there's the Bud Light sign. Bud Light. Fat twink shit. Hey, Bud Light, enjoy the bed you made. Sleep yeah. in it. Nighty night. Yeah, and they're they're doing the whole thing where they're coming back uh, with Twitter now, and they're just getting ratioed on every single post, yeah. trying to pretend like nothing happened, and it's pathetic. And they fired that lady who did this thing. They fired multiple people. They got multiple scalps on the marketing chain of command. So smart. They should keep scalping. Yeah. All right, moving on. We're still in housekeeping. We have two a page and a half of housekeeping left. Cool. This is the time where we're going to tell everyone to tickle the post, juice the algorithm, help us out, leave a comment. Tickle, tickle, like the post. And then now, most importantly, turn your notifications on 
because we are doing two episodes a week starting next week, and there will be a new episode on Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesdays and Fridays, 11 a.m. Eastern, is our new time, our new schedule. Turn your notifications on. I never told anyone to turn notifications on. Just do that right now. Turn your notifications on, and we have a new episode coming out Tuesday. Tuesdays and Fridays, two episodes a week. This is a big, big call to action. We need those notifications on. We need a good Tuesday release. We need a good Tuesday release. Algorithm is going to have no idea what happened. Are the podcast now? Mm-hmm. What? So... We need the help, guys. We need the help. Tuesday release. Help the algo juice the post. And it's going to be two, uh, like we usually go for an hour and a half here. Mm -hmm. When we start doing two a week, it's going to be an hour and and an hour, basically. Maybe a little extra. Yep. Right? Um, Hour and hour, maybe a little extra. But we're going to be able to cover more topics. Like there are certain things that it's like, oh, Monday, the news cycle. And then we just kind of miss it with the once a week. So we're not going to have that problem anymore. Exactly. And obviously, if uh, we also have bonus land, too. So if you guys love the show and want an extra 30 minutes on Fridays, there will be an extra 30-minute bonus land on FleckusTalks.com, where we continue the show and have great topics. Uh, FleckusTalks.com is the website. Go sign up. We had a bunch of people sign up. We're not doing Patreon anymore. We're not doing YouTube subscriptions anymore. We're doing just FleckusTalks.com for bonus land. And then we're also going to do Q&As and fun bonus pieces of content on there. So go join us. All right, let's get into housekeeping. We're still in housekeeping. It's a very important housekeeping. New Guinness Book of World Records just dropped. That should be on our shirt. All right, we're still in housekeeping. It's a very important housekeeping. We still have two pages of housekeeping. All right, Guinness Records. Guinness Book of World Records just dropped a new one, a hula hooper. Yeah. Let's let it play really quick. Let's first. let it play. The world's largest hula hoop. Just an average like woman. She's got a she's vest. Five on. four, one hundred and five pounds. Yeah, and she's got the biggest hula hoop. She's got a camera on it. And here, look at her go. Just in the street in some like you know Tempe, Arizona, or something. And this lady thinks she has the record. She's like one hundred and five pounds, seventeen foot diameter, and she has the record because she has the hula hoop. It it's a it's a procurement record. Yeah, it's like she just sourced the biggest hula hoop and was like, "Okay, I'm here." Like, there's men on the street that could do that better than her. There's like a six five guy who goes, "Let me give it a whirl, Deb." It's like, no, and no. She goes, no, no, no. I don't want anyone to tie my record. Just me, just me. No. <laughs> so yeah, this completely has the record because she has the world's largest hula hoop. Yeah, it's a sourcing thing. She just got it. Like, she got it yeah. from the right vendor. She got it created. So that's the yeah. level we're at. Um, yeah, do you want- can I try? No, no, no I'm, just me. I'm alone on this. She destroys it after the record. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Do you want to do the other one, too? What's the other one? The running on fire. Yeah, sure. Or you want to skip it? Uh, I wanted to skip it, but I brought it up. So let's it's too rip late. it let's, now. Let's rip it. Feel a full body burn. But this man was truly on fire. He broke the Guinness World Record for the fastest full body burn without oxygen running 272 metres while on fire in just 17 seconds. So, 270 metres in 17 seconds. That's not true. That's not possible, literally, right? Because Yeah, I know ballpark metres and yards are the same, and then 100 yards, basically 300 yards in less than 20 seconds, not possible. While wearing a fire suit. So they botched that. Yeah. That's not true. And then also... You're wearing a fire suit, and then you're saying I'm the best runner. The fire suit isn't even a run suit. It's like heavy and bulky and meant to not get you on fire. You're not supposed to be running in this. Yeah, the Guinness so Book of stupid. the Guinness Book of dumb shit that like nobody else has randomly done continues. Yeah, so that's it. Guinness Book of shit you never could have thought of. Yeah, but someone did. <laughs> Um, you should do fat as fuck podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> we might be up there. Actually, I'm sure like the thousand pound sisters or something would have one. Or what's his name? No, my name is Boo Boo. I'm the Hawaiian fat fuck. <laughs> like huge fat fuck Hawaiian guy. I think Somewhere dead. over the rainbow guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's dead. Is he a comedian? I think he's dead. I don't know. I thought he just sang that ukulele song and died. I'm thinking of the guy with the mouse face. He's huge and gigantic. He goes like this. And he's like Mike, Mikey or something. No, not ringing a bell. Oh, yeah. He's got like, he's like Hispanic kind of. He's a big fat fuck. Okay. All Probably right. So we don't even have it. So yeah. we can't even get the record. But if yeah. we find the biggest hula hoop, we can get that done. So we I know could that. do that. Yeah. I know you could. All right. Let's move on. We have really important stuff to get to. Um, all right. On my trip, I was looking up things about clones. 
Okay. And I think we need to establish a protocol. I think you and I need to do monthly check-ins to make sure no one is a clone. Every week we'll just do a random thing. Maybe it's like we do like a wink, wink, clap every hour just to make sure no one's got cloned. Okay. All right. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Let's start it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start it next week. We don't want to get someone cloned and then have them kind of like come back and be treated as normal. And then it's like I gatekeep a clone and like bring a – if you're a clone, mm-hmm. everyone be like, oh, Fleckus and Rap Boy, I, I trust them. Yeah. And then it's like you get cloned and then you can like deceive the whole audience. Yeah. So that'd be bad. Smart. Smart. Yeah. Two more pages of House of Prayer. <laughs> So we'll just do a quick. Uh, the joke for that was we got to do a monthly check in. Yeah, we got to do a monthly check in every week. We're gonna make sure no one got cloned, and then you know every few hours we're just gonna. Yeah. So the joke was like, I'm gonna obsess and I'm gonna dig around in your arm and make sure you're a yeah. real. Yeah. But human. the joke was like, oh, once a month we'll check in, and it's like, yep, every week we'll check in, and it's like, yep, every couple hours mm-hmm. we'll do a little. But I guess it didn't fucking work. Yeah. Um, all right, Drake's on some twink shit. Did you see this? Yeah, he painted his nails and shit. He painted his nails. Here he is, a little pretty boy. He is really boy. on some twink shit. He's singing. And it's such a shame because his music goes so hard. I love Drake's raps, or I used to. Yeah. Truck to the plane to the truck. With my little fingernails painted, too. Yeah, with my Louis bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he so, kind of, he subverted his own messaging of baller shit. Yeah. By painting his nails like, do, like a twink. He ruined it. He yeah. ruined it. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. Everyone knew he was gay, but whatever. When he's now he's like do he's getting activated by the Illuminati to go do some shit now. Makes sense. Yeah. So we're coming into important times. Um, all right, new Richard Rapoy obsession. One and two. The giant tits people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Richard Rapoy was obsessed with the giant woodshop teacher tits. And now we got two more. What do you think of this? You well, like that? This is the same guy. I don't like this because he's putting in no effort. But this is a guy in California who one of the watchers of the show has sent me personal videos of this guy before. So, um, so they, could, they personal call videos of this guy. Yeah, like on the street. Like I've had like reporting sent to me. Um, and this guy, they call him Jugs, and he doesn't even try. He just bounces around with those tits. Has no wig. No, he's he's. <laughs> He's nothing compared to the big titty woodshop teacher, but they're multiplying is the point. Yeah, but that's like a lower. You have like less interest in a, in a person like that. Yeah, I'm you not like the woodshop I, teacher. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't drive me crazy like Sam Brenton or the uh, big titty woodshop teacher. So that's fair. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, speaking of obsessions, Rob Smith's birthday. Yeah, it was Rob Smith's birthday last week. Happy birthday, Rob. Happy birthday, Rob. We love you. Somebody um, also sent us this. Someone sent us this. Rob Smith at the Hobby Lobby. They the, put it together. The decor. That's huge. That works. Um, and then maybe we read a little bit of his caption from his birthday post. Yeah, let's see what he's up to. Today is my birthday, and I'm thinking about how terrible, horrible, no good, and very bad 2022 was for me. It was the kind of year when you realize who is a true friend and who is just along for the ride when you appear to be famous or popular. And what happens when you realize you've left one cult and traded it for another? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Famous and popular. But yeah, that's the problem. Because Rob gets famous and popular, he's rich, and then people just start hanging out with them for the wrong reasons. They want the cabana access. I want to go play tennis in Miami. I would love ceviche. I want to hop on the back of that Vespa. Yeah, let me get on the jet ski Hope with you, it Rob. it doesn't rain. Oh, jet ski Rob. Yep. And that's what happens. And, you don't, and it's like hard because you don't know who your real friends are. It's tough. It's very tough. So that's what he's dealing with. And then he also posted the other day, I have not been home in Miami in weeks. That wasn't the initial plan. Things just kind of happened. NYC, Cape Cod, Hamptons, Fire Island, Martha's Vineyard, et cetera, have happened, and some are still to come. All the hits. Fire Island? Come on. He's doing the best summer ever. You know what's going on at Fire Island. Yeah. Fire Island, where... Hey, boys. Hey, boys. Um, (laughs) There is a thing with gay guys where they'll hang out at like a gay guy party, and there will be a hundred gay guys and not one girl. Yeah. And that's just what it is. I'm not making fun of that. That's I, just guys I, being guys, and that's statistics, you yeah. know? I've, like, told a story. I went to L.A. once. There was a party. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's a gay party, but, like, there'll be people there you can meet or whatever. So I mean, my friend was in the band, like, performing, and he's, like, explaining to me like that. And I was like, all right, I'll go. I'm sure, actually, I'll probably have a better chance with the only girls there because they're not going to be into the gay guys. Yeah. Not one girl. Yeah. All homosexuals. All doing twink shit. All in the pool. All barely clothed. All trying to hit on me. It was bad. Not good. It was really bad. Ugh, I had to wash my mouth out for weeks after that. 
Um, all right. We are actually going to do a contest. Speaking of Rob. Okay. You know broccoli, Rob? The dish. The food. Like it's like a, it's like a broccoli Italian dish. Yeah. We want to do a broccoli Rob contest where if you guys send us your best broccoli Rob pictures, whatever that means, Photoshop, maybe he's the green giant, maybe he's half broccoli, half Rob, whatever you guys want to do, the best broccoli Rob will win a merch bundle. And then I'm going to put the best broccoli Robs like framed on my wall. Cool. I also wanted to do a thing, a T-shirt, to have someone kind of make a T-shirt from the audience um, that says, BLT is best sandwich, Arnie Palmy Summer. Kind of like a botched in- for English as a second language type of thing. For sure. But, you know, so if you guys... If that, if that resonates with you. Yeah, if that resonates with you. Jump on it. Jump on it. BLT is best sandwich, Arnie Palmy Summer. All right, last page of housekeeping. We're almost done. Diet Cokes are carcinogens now. Yeah, but then that kind of got fact checked a little bit. Uh, aspartame, you know, aspartame. They're, they're saying diet coke sweetener aspartame is possible carcinogen, and then somebody goes, "We've known this for ten plus Everyone years." Everyone knows this, and it's the same type of carcinogen as aloe vera is. Yeah, we take the risks. We take the risks. We don't rip too many. Donald Rumsfeld made aspartame. Did you know that? No, he invented it and like owned it for a while, and then sold it to some like GMO company, some conglomerate. So, do you think Donald Rumsfeld would lead us in the wrong direction? Absolutely not. <laughs> and he's still alive, right? Yeah. He's yeah. like 101 years old, Is Donald he? Rumsfelding around. Yeah. I think. All right. No more than two a day. That's what we're doing, or that's what I'm doing. No more than two Diet Cokes a day, and you should be fine. All right. We're almost done with housekeeping. That giant basketball player? Yeah. So, this came out and uh, this I, giant guy. I saw the meme. It was like uh, the little rascals trying to get a loan at the bank. Yeah, Look little at- rascals stacked up on each other trying to get a loan from the bank. That's what this is. So this guy was the number one pick in the 2023 NBA draft, right? And, like, just look at this body. Look at this guy, right? Yeah. And so this kind of set me off a little bit. Yeah, string bean ass. Motherfucker. Motherfucker, yeah. So who cares? This this kind of, like, set me off. I was like, who cares who the biggest genetic freak on earth is, Right. Yeah. Who's designed just to play basketball? This guy's seven foot five. His proportions are insane. Look at his torso to legs. Look at his arms. Stupid outfit. He's just designed to play basketball. And it's like, I would much rather see whatever random six foot two white guy is somehow the best baseball player on earth. Mm, right? Mm. I don't think this guy, like, you know. Because then it becomes like a circus. Who can get the best string bean player? Exactly. It becomes a circus. Oh, we have a seven foot eight. Oh, we got a Chinese string we bean. We got a Chinaman. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's, <laughs> like, he's Yao Ming. And so I don't know. I don't really like this. Um, mm. And it, it kind of it set me off a little bit. Like, who cares about basketball if everyone's just a string bean? Like, Kevin Durant is like six foot ten in a string bean. And I haven't watched the NBA in a while. But this kind of, it got me on a weird thought process. Yeah. Like, where I don't care about this at all. Yeah, me neither. It doesn't, it, it's not impressive that, oh, my God, the seven foot five guy was number one pick in the NBA. Wow. He should have been. Yeah. Could like, have been anybody. I know. So What a coinky dink. So that was pretty weird to me. Yeah, I don't like what it either. What a coinky dink? Yeah. The seven foot five guy. Yeah, I know. Best I've basketball I've never guy. heard you say that before. Well, all right. You done with your basketball and racist comments? Racist? This guy's a string bean. He's like a freak. <laughs> He's a circus guy. Like yeah, he said. is a circus guy. So, All right, let's move on. Kay. Last piece of housekeeping. AI can 3D view the whole world with Wi-Fi now, like Batman did in that movie. This yeah, this was a bat tool, like a little yeah. thing you threw out there. Let's see. So what they did is they had um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it. Um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router. And they just learned to predict, like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. So all the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room. And this is what they're able to reconstruct. Real-time 3D pose estimation, right? So suddenly, AI has turned every Wi-Fi router into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. So that's probably not good yeah that's going to be used to kill people in it probably already yeah. has <laughs> now i was thinking imagine the ai since it's programmed left leaning progressively like imagine if ai is like the biggest threat to the world is right-wing fascist bigots 
I'm going to take it upon myself to kill them all. Yeah. And then they kill them all, and then it's AI. It's like this unnamed, unhuman bodied robot thing. And then everyone's going to go, oh, that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Who's in trouble for it? Like, no one really. It was like the robots did it. That, we need to get that fixed. So I think there's a world where that could happen. It could yeah. be like an AI massacre, and then just there's no one that goes down for it. I just killed all the right wingers, sir. No, what? I cannot make a joke about Joe Biden. Like, <laughs> yeah. but... Exactly. Like, what? Oh, yeah. you did? Whoa. All right, let's move on. We are out of housekeeping. We are into cringe of the week. This week's Cringe of the Week is brought to you by our bonus land. Extra 30 minutes of the show drops simultaneously on FleckusTalks.com. So if you love the show and want an extra 30 minutes, FleckusTalks.com is the website. We have a lot of good clips. We have a funny fashion show. Trans person goes to the OBGYN. Um, Trans people are ruining lesbian dating sites. Guys got caught stealing a four-wheeler. There's a cave diver. There's a lot, a lot of good stuff. Trump's the only president didn't own slaves. Let's just cover that now. I don't care. Yeah. I wish he did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about anybody's 400, you know, three generations, 10 generations back. Yeah. I don't care. Trump didn't own slaves. We all knew that. Yeah. He's German. He came from Germany. Like yeah. Two generations Slavery was 200 years ago. Yeah. 300, right? 350 Yeah, 350. Or something. Something what, 1865? Big. Yeah. 1965. Yeah. We're basically 200 years away. 200 years. All right. We're in cringe. We're going to start our cringe off with a what happens next section. Remember we used to do that? Yeah. What happens next? We show you like the starting frame of a clip and we do guess what happens next. Um, So this first one, the guy walking down the street in New York. um, And then we have we have uh, four options. What happens next here? A, a truck tire comes down and crushes that guy in the orange shirt. Okay. B, this guy on the right falls down. The other guy thinks he's being robbed and kicks him in the head. Okay. C, a window falls 16 stories and crushes the guy in the orange shirt, and we're going to censor that when the impact happens. Okay. Or D, a pit bull attacks them. Uh, I think window falling. I think this is a good window fall opportunity. All right. Let's let it rip. Oh, no. <laughs> oh man, no humanity left. Man, that's a low trust society right there. <laughs> that guy trips and he immediately gets two face kicks. Yep. Oh my god, this it, is New York? I think so. This looks like too many bikes out here to be New York. This looks yeah. like some sort of Asian town. Yeah, it's probably some Asian town. I just, uh, that was part of the part yeah, of what happened. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is why we're staying up this summer. This is why you can't be falling down. Yeah, stand tall, I guess. If you fall down, it's like people are either going to think you're doing something bad to them or they're going to film you falling down and like being at your lowest moment. So this is why you need to stay up this summer or else. All right. Next, um, the guy on the boat in the Everglades. Okay. Guess what happens next? A, he gets obliterated by a tiger shark. <laughs> it says shark attack in Everglades on the video, so. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh. He was just wait. The shark was just waiting there. I guess, man. That's bad. Yeah. All right, last. Those little one. tips they give you. Those little tips. They're like, no, no, don't ever put a bloody hand or don't ever put fish in there. Like, there is a one in a million. Time. They don't say that for nothing. Yeah. So that's there. It is. Keep it one hundred in the Everglades, guys. All right, last clip. These people are hanging out at a barbecue, it looks like. Guess what happens next? A stray bullet takes out that guy in the white wife beater sitting down. Okay. A stray bullet takes him out. B, the house explodes. C, the deck gives out. D, nothing. This is footage from one of Chinese Donut Boy's Airbnbs and nothing happens. I'm going to say the deck blows out. There's a lot of weight here, and it looks like some more people are coming. (laughs) That's a good guess. All right. Let's see. Oh, Big Mama's walking up the stairs. Yep. This should be fine. This deck was built with certain standards. Yeah. There's no problem here. Everyone's gone. All right. All right. There you go. That's our What Happens Next. Do you like that? Yeah. Easy money. 
easy money. I thought I, I thought there was no way the first guy was going to get fall and then beaten up. Yeah. I, that, that Like, a lot of times when these guess what happens next things, you're looking at the angle. Like, this looks like a building suicide guy. Like, or this looks like a, a car's about to peel out. So, a lot of it's from that first frame, but I did not expect that. Thanks. All right, moving on. You're welcome. We are still... <laughs> you asked me, right? <laughs> Didn't you? We're still in... Cringe. cringe of the week. This is our trans, non-trans cringe. The pizza guy's not happy with his tip. Hi. Hello. Come here, Matt. Matt. Yep. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I just want to say it's a nice house for a $5 tip. You're welcome. Fuck you. What? You're fired. Yeah. Uh, he's probably on an app, right? That's not the real, like, he's, he doesn't work for the pizza place. I obviously. think he works for the pizza place because he has that pizza bag Ugh. that it comes in. Mm. $5 on a $20 pizza is not good enough for you. Why don't you just quit the job and go find something better and let an illegal immigrant or a child do this job? Hit the oil rig, brother. <laughs> like, what are you waiting for? Yeah. Like, I don't know. If you're, if you're begging for tips and $5 doesn't do it for you. Isn't this a teenager's job? Yeah. Isn't this some sort of transitory job that like shouldn't be that's for weekend for weed money? Don't yeah. you need it for like beer money and you know <laughs> weed money job for <laughs> yeah. some college for kid. some college kid who's getting stoned? What are you talking about? And then back in the day, we used to give a three dollar tip. That was when I was a kid, and that was like yeah. normal money, four dollars. And that was before they stole all the money and all the money went up. Yeah, and now yeah, everything yeah. now it's like forty dollar pizza. Something happened. Five is pretty standard. Um Depending on the distance and stuff like that. Do like, they still do five 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 deal Domino's? Uh, rarely, I think. I, I don't know. You used to be able to get three pizzas for fifteen dollars when I was a kid. Now I get one Domino's pizza and it's like twenty four dollars. Yeah. It's so over. the game's it's over. They stole the money. Yeah, the game has changed. And you know what? Like I, I'm going to assume he's an Uber Eats or whatever instead of the pizza guy because they do have some of those pizza things. I don't know. Yeah. But for the sake of argument, like. Why the fuck would you work for the mega global app corp who's always fucking you and depending on tips? Like, find it. Just do something else. Do another job. Work overnight security, dog. Like, and getting so mad about a $5 tip. Have you never been stiffed? Have you never been tipped zero? What do you do for the zero house? You light it on fire? Yeah. You eat a piece of the pizza. It's a nice house for a $5 tip. It's You're like- You're lucky I don't fucking kill you. Get my, my husband. Get I'm my husband. I'm going to stand my ground yeah. right now. <laughs> No, so. man, tip culture is insane. It's gone crazy. I hate it. Uh, flipping iPads, people want 20% now. I always hit zero, zero dollars. If, if it's from a counter, if I work my way across a counter and I say beans, meat, this, and then you ask me for a tip, no. I always give whatever the middle one is. No, not me. Not for an iPad flip, guys. Not for an iPad flip. So, yeah. But now- I don't know what's what. I I give like seven dollars for Uber Eats. That's a lot. You tip you tip well. That's too much. I I do the same thing for Uber Eats, like six seven bucks sometimes, because that's like their own car, their own thing, blah blah blah. But man, and in my head, it's like if I didn't go to the restaurant myself, and I had it brought to my door, and it gets slopped here, and I could just scarf it. Yeah, I'll pay seven bucks to not have to go do a whole day of collecting these items. Yeah, but man, it's getting out of control. People give an attitude. I don't expect that from nice house for a five dollar tip. Let me let my dog out. Yeah, the dog is a little chihuahua, but I get your point. All right, let's move on. We're still in non trans cringe. The proposal after the woman goes in the bathroom and the airplane. He knocks on the bathroom door, and everyone's filming. It's like the most embarrassing thing you could ever set up. <laughs> yeah, I've seen enough, right? Yeah, you do. You, yeah, I was gonna do a bit where it was gonna be like a green screen, but like us in the bathroom, and then like put in some sound effects, disgusting sound effects. And then have it come out, have me come out, and then everyone's filming, and then be like, oh no. <laughs> but it was just too disgusting. And yeah. I don't want my, you know, myself to be presented in that way. 
Mm-hmm. I don't want the audience to see me pretending to shit and then blow come out, out and blow out stuff. Yeah, it's too disgusting. I can't do it. But what, what's your take on that? If any leg of your proposal process includes someone exiting the bathroom, I think you should press pause and just take a step back and go, well, what would my fiance, future wife want to do? Not a good look on the plane. Where the were bathroom? you? Where are you coming from? To like, hey, everyone. She's in the bathroom. Oh, it's going to happen in a few minutes. And then like a few minutes go by and then the whole plane's watching the person the in the watch. bathroom. Disgusting. Yeah. And you grab her hand and she, her hand's not wet. So she didn't wash her hands. I, and so I've also seen like some pretty elaborate uh, proposals where like somebody gets a cop to pull over their girlfriend and then it's like, or like, hey, we got to rush to the hospital. Your husband just had an aneurysm or something. Yeah. And they kind of like catch him off guard and then like go through an emotional thing up and down. And then all of a sudden a guy's kneeling there with the ring. And it's like you kind of caught her off guard and you, you tricked her almost. Yeah. And it's it's like what happened to like waiting for a nice moment, like carrying the ring in your pocket for like three weeks and then like yeah. waiting for a moment where it feels right or something. Now it's all photographers and the police are involved. Like yeah. An ambulance. <laughs> an ambulance. Your husband's in here. He's in the back. And then he's kneeling. Yeah. I don't get it, man. I don't know. Can't it's, you just do it at the sunset somewhere? That's what I'm saying. Go to a restaurant that you first met. Yeah. Now it's like the cop pulls her over. And then you have like your your girlfriend like throwing pills and weed out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> and the cop's like, ooh, uh, what did I, I just see here? I'm off duty technically because this is a bit. But yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're proposing. I just threw my weed pen out. I don't know. <laughs> on yeah. the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, man. I don't know what bathroom ambush was what that guy was thinking. But yeah, I, uh, congratulations to the happy couple yeah. if you're happy. But. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't like shit like that. Yeah. Don't don't talk to me near the bathroom, about the bathroom, when I just got out of the bathroom. Yeah. 20-minute I mean, buffer after the bathroom before proposing. Yeah. On the airplane? Why don't you just do it in the, the, the place you're flying to? That's what I said. It's like you're either coming from or to a destination, right? You couldn't get it done either way? Whatever. Bathroom. All yeah. right. Then she should go in the bathroom. And then it's like- Immediately after the bathroom. I, I, don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Not good. All right, moving on. Affirmative action is done. That happened while we were gone. Can we go through a couple of the things that happened while we were gone? Affirmative action, student loans. The um, trans person with the boner. Yeah, Krasensteins. The trans person with the boner in the bathroom. The Krasensteins were defending a naked guy in front of kids at the Pride Parade. Like, there there were bangers we coming out. We missed it all. Yeah. We picked the worst week to go on vacation. So, I mean, we're going to cover some stuff that might be a little bit old, but we have yeah. to cover so it. So affirmative action is done now unless Joe Biden does something ridiculous. Oh, well, It's done in the extent of the law. I think Harvard's still going to go all yeah. gas, no brakes on letting – the unfortunates in, you yeah, know, as we call them. The uh, their their essay, yeah. The worse the essay and the worse the story, the more likely it's gonna be like Asian people trying to sound black. Yeah, yeah. Asian people writing an essay like we was. <laughs> 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 and some people trying to catch they flight. <laughs> security, Asian security, security, security. Right. Um. So Joy Reid, we, we have a little funny quote from her. Well, let, let me just be clear. I got into Harvard only because of affirmative action. No. <laughs> Crazy. Joy, what are you talking about? You only got to Harvard because of affirmative action because you're black? Joy, you're so intelligent. There's no way that's true. There's no way. You're Come a brainiac. On, Joy. Yeah. And then there was that other article about um, mediocre whites. So what does it say? Yeah, the Supreme Court has uh, killed affirmative action. Mediocre whites can rest easier. It's like, don't you, don't you even realize what you're saying with that? So mediocre whites are better than elite? Blacks? So it's like mediocre whites, and then it's like that's the level of black people you were letting in, the people that were at the same level of mediocre whites. No more of that. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Um, and then there's there's been a bunch of stats, like an Asian student to get into Harvard needs to score 270 points higher on the SAT to have the same chances of admission as a black person. The stats are pretty overwhelming. The stats were really bad. Yeah. I, I, I Hey, I've noticed it too. When I went to college, when we went to college – we went to a college that was like made for Native American people. Yeah, Dartmouth College founded 1769 to and it was like part of their thing was to educate the Indians, this this noble savages. Yeah. And that was like their whole thing. Yeah. And I'm not just saying this. Every time I was in a class with a Native American person, that person wouldn't have performed well at my high school. 
There was one time I had to grade in another girl's essay and do like a peer review. Like it was like pass the papers around and and it was just like it was something like it looks like a sixth grader wrote. Like oh the first guy fell and then the other guy came and couldn't find and then another guy like it was written like like a one stream of thought. Then another man came in a blue car. Yeah. He but, was angry. Yeah, he was angry but the other guy got scared. Yeah. It's like what? And I was I was like I don't even know like do I make corrections on there there like the wrong grammatical stuff like are we even at that level yeah so yeah i'm glad it, i'm glad it's gone this should be colorblind admissions if the asians take it they take it yeah to but an extent let them go to the school and learn all the stuff everyone else can just hang out yeah i i agree that's my take and it's also like there's a thing with um like white people will be in the colleges that's kind of the point it's like there are more 115 iq white people than there are Asians mm -hmm, in mm -hmm, America, mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. whole country. So it's like just a very weird thing that this was. And I made a joke like that. This was I think this was the last piece of institutional racism out there, mm -hmm. literally institutions engaging, engaging in racism. But that's obviously not true. We still have the quotas at corporations, Amer uh, United Airlines. We need more black pilots, you know, so it's getting greasy out there. There's still a ton of institutional racism. Unfortunately, none of it favors whites. Yeah. A lot of nepotism favors whites, you know, old, old, old Mr. Arbuckle got his nephew into the eye banking internship. Like, mm -hmm. duh, that's going to happen. That's not white people. That's just that guy. <laughs> you know, yeah. he's not like, come on in white boys. It's just, that's my uncle. You know, I like that stuff. And like, they're trying to get rid of legacies in colleges. Well, uh, who wouldn't love to inherit their parents' business or something and keep it going? And wouldn't you want to do that? Like, oh, I went to I went to Harvard. Now my kid can get in, like I got in, and then their kid. Because I go, keep donating, and we keep. I'm we, fine with legacies. Legacies are great. That's how you build like that's a tradition. That's how you build a cultural pipeline, right? You build like a group, uh, and they have like norms and traditions continue, and yeah, they want to take that away. Yeah. Um but I get it. I get people complaining about legacies, but. I you would know, complain I about care. affirmative action before legacies. Uh, duh, of course. Know? So it's like, all right, we get rid of affirmative action. Now we could have a legacy conversation, mm -hmm. maybe. But also, I'm a like I don't like the traditional education system. I think it's a scam. It costs like eighty grand to go to USC. Oh yeah, everything became a scam. So I, I'm I'm fine with like letting it burn too. And if you're gonna go to college go, and you live in Illinois, go to the University of Illinois. Get the cheap, like you know, get the state college. Don't make your parents kill themselves trying to uh, go to a private school that's four states away and they have to fly and you go back every Thanksgiving. Do the cheap shit if you're going to go. Yeah, do the cheap shit local. Learn something specific. It, my thing is it, if you're going to go to college, go to a great college. If you can't get into a great college, go learn something specific at some random place. Yeah, take geology and then be the guy who finds the oil places that they yeah, drill. You know, yeah. get something very substantial. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, R and D person on machine learning for manufacturing, you know, something that's easily trained. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. No need to go to some crap college and blow 400 grand and learn nothing and graduate yeah. with everyone else. Yep. All right. Moving on. Last piece of non-trans cringe. The Daisy Dukes is dividing the, is dividing Twitter. What's the headline? Yeah, it exactly? says Daisy dudes, skimpy shorts for men divide Twitter. Quote, my junk would come out. Divide Twitter. I think you just saw some twinks Who talking like, about this is great. Gay shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking I don't know. about. There's not much Twitter division here. Uh, I would never wear that. Guys should never wear that unless yeah. you're a homosexual. Yeah, in which case, enjoy it. Enjoy Fire Island, and uh, we won't see you there. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let's move on to our trans cringe. We have a lot of trans stuff. Uh, what let's about see. Jen Pisaki? Uh, that comes up in transcript. Okay, okay. I, I wasn't sure. Jump the gun. All right. Um, so we have some update. Let's see what trans people are doing in the bathroom. Let's see what they're doing bathroom wise this week. And everyone will say, "Oh, you're obsessed with trans people in the bathroom, and what the, you care more about than anyone else." Yeah, I love this shit. I love this shit. It's on. It's on the show every week. Of course, we're obsessed with trans people and what bathroom they use. It's all I fucking think about. Yeah, and I'm gonna let you in on a secret. It's a big part of what they think about, too. Yeah. They're obsessing. They're going, where, where Where can I fit in? Where can I go? Can I get away with it? Yeah. I'm fucking bricked up yeah. and ready to go piss in the women's yeah. bathroom. We're all bricked up from this. Yeah. 
All right, so all right, so yeah, trans bathroom boner. This is a trans person in the woman's bathroom, and they have a boner. Look at his fucking face too. Like this is like some. This guy should be a Polish construction worker, and instead he's wearing a dress bricked up in the women's bathroom. And then the women are just openly filming him. Like that's the best part. It's like, what are you doing? You waiting on a stall? You just bricked up? You just bricked up. Watching probably pornography on his phone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, guys, shock. It's fetish shit. It always has yeah. been. It, it proves it, the theory. Peel off the as many layers as you want. It's fetish shit at the core. Yeah, it's all weird fetish shit. And, you know, this person's in the woman's bathroom because they don't want to be uncomfortable in the men's bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So, like, all the women and, and girls are uncomfortable. I'd rather this person be uncomfortable in the men's room. It's a universal truth. Let the let the uh, let the sore thumb be the uncomfy guy instead of uh, getting the boner in front Everyone of everyone else. This person's obviously got problems. Um, all right, let's move on to the guy who says about the transgender euphoria about the bathroom, the next bathroom guy. And this is this is the example where it's like they're equally obsessing over it too. Yeah. So. Unexpected gender euphoric moment. So yesterday I went to an event at like a convention center. Of course they have divided bathrooms. Yes. And I'm wearing this bad, well-fitting outfit, showing all my curves, my assets. This skirt is tight, tight. I'm looking fine. The event is fucking fantastic. But I got to use the bathroom and, and reality is I'm trans and mask presenting best I can tell. And therefore, in some spaces, I tend to still use the men's room. It's not my favorite. I'd prefer not to. But I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to keep the peace, I guess. Others' comfort, my safety. Safety. I don't know. I, I might be overthinking it. But anyways, I go to the men's bathroom, and all of the men in there are looking at me like, what are you doing in here? And I'm thinking to myself and looking back like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here either. That's You're good. confused. Yeah. While so he goes on to say that he got euphoria from the men looking at him weird and thinking, oh, I'm out of place in the men's room. I really am a girl. Yeah. In my skirt. And it's just everyone's just looking at you because you're like a weird trans person. You're the freak. You're the oddity. It's not like a what, you, what's this person? Doing? Yeah, that's a lady. Put you next to that NBA guy, and we got a we got some oddities. We got a sideshow. Exactly. Yeah. So I do that too. Sometimes, like gay guys will see me checking them out mm -hmm. because I'm just seeing how much twink shit they're up to. Yeah. What, oh, you're in heels and leather pants, and you're wearing a, a tank top, and you, there your ass is out. And, Let me get closer. Uh, yeah. Let me get a real look. Like, what does he smell like? Yeah. Underneath there, see if our pheromones match. See if I'm, you know, and see if we can make some memories in the jacuzzi. <laughs> yeah. So there's like times where it's like you'll check out a gay guy just to see how gay they are and what they're up to, just so you can kind of like, oh man, I saw the gayest gay guy today. <laughs> yeah, and they think like, oh, everyone's checking me out. I um, must be. Yeah, you must like my outfit. Yeah, um, it's not that. Yeah. Oh, it's like I was turning heads and it's like you're wearing the giant fake prosthetic tits. And it's like, yeah, you're going to turn heads. Like, People couldn't stop looking. It's like yeah. you're looking like a freak show. Oh, and so this is another I mean, I guess we've already kind of said it, but like how important and validating and whatever this bathroom experience is to this guy, you know, mm -hmm. it's like they're obsessed with it, too. This other guy's getting hard. He's he's bricked up. He's got the boner. He they, they let him in. Nobody's saying anything. And this guy, oh, I got a weird look. It's all very important to them. So don't act like we're the weird ones yeah. for being equally obsessed. For being obsessed as well. Obsession is not a weird thing for us. Mm -hmm. We're just showing it and downloading these videos and saving them. Constantly phones. watching them and, you know, <laughs> analyzing every frame. <laughs> all right. Um, next, the, the dad who has the receipts, the bathroom receipts. So th everyone says, like, oh, the trans bathroom. It's not even a huge deal. Everyone, the right wing just obsesses over it. It's like it's a non-event. This guy has the receipts and approves the opposite. Several weeks ago, in a vote to allow trans students to use whatever bathroom they wish, you assured us that these policies were perfectly safe, as neither yourself nor law enforcement could provide a single example of any trans student assaulting any girl in any bathroom, in any school, in any state, anywhere in all, in fact. But not to worry, since you could locate them, I took the trouble to. See, Loudoun County, Virginia, where last year, under district policy, 
a trans student was allowed into the women's bathroom where he assaulted a girl. To cover it up, they moved him to another school where he did it again. See Irvine, California last month where a trans student entered the women's locker room and flashed the girls there. When they confronted him, he mercilessly beat them. This happened again in Gwinnett County, Georgia. This happened again in Oklahoma City. This happened again in Ohio, where a trans man was allowed to use the locker room where he was arrested for flashing little the girls. YMCA the one. judge dropped the charges after he ruled that this man was too fat for them to see anything. Last month, Real gem. in this city, a man using they, them pronouns in a scene straight out of Silence of the Lambs hunted down and killed a female jogger because he, quote, wanted to look just like her. And before you say that these are anecdotal evidence, just note that in a survey of trans inmates in federal prisons, half were convicted of sexual assault and 90% were convicted of violent crimes well above the general prison population. Now, it should also be noted that in each of these cases, each of these perpetrators had either changed their pronouns, had undergone transition, or had received gender-affirming therapy and accommodations thereof. Why is this important to note? Probably for the same reason we recognize as a society that you do not affirm that people with anorexia can be healthy in any way. You do not yeah, affirm that somebody points, with schizophrenia yeah. Yeah. is so that's good receipts. They always try to play it down like, oh, there's, it's not even a huge deal. This is like a 1% of 1%, no big deal, random people. Why are we all obsessed? And it's like, nah, dog. They're everywhere and they're doing everything. And part of the obsession is because it's such a simple thing that's so easy to solve. And it's like someone just needs to be the adult in the room, a.k.a. the country or the state, and say, nope. Yeah. And that just somehow, for some reason, hasn't happened. Because I guess, I don't know, white women or something? Yeah. Somebody came together and I don't know. And then all yeah, the white women got mad and they started getting all emotional. And then the men are just like watching too much pornography. Yeah. And they are, their brains are fried. And then they just go, oh, whatever you think is bad. We don't want to be, uh, we don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to, we want to protect people. It's not, not worth this battle, you know? Yep. And then that's what happens. And they took everything again. And then some 16 year old girl gets fucking raped. Yeah. Mercilessly beaten by some guy in a locker room and you're a girl in high school. Yeah. Mm, nice. Um, all right. Let's play the trans church clip. Mm, this might curse the show. Rise in body or spirit, and let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. I believe in the non binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads and saw everyone as a sibling child of God. Oh, I believe bad. in the. You don't think that's going to curse the show, right? No, but we need to curse them somehow. We need to well, reverse they're it. cursed themselves. They're they're God will smite that church. Yeah. Something you're will asking happen. for a final destination lightning strike situation for stuff like that. Absolutely, the woman leading the whole church in the first line they hit is not about Jesus. It's what? about a non. It's about the pronouns. The pronouns. Then Jesus had two dads. It's like someone's, someone in there is going to like, I got to get out of here. Something, this roof's going to collapse. Who are these people, man? That's bad. What happened? Who that's are these bad? I, we have to reverse that. This is That's not us. The show does not believe that. The audience does not believe that. We uh, There's no authority of that demonic shit here. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Michigan's trying to give people five years or a 10K fine for misgendering. This is another big one we missed. Obviously, yeah. it came out right after. Um, I don't. Whenever they say that, what does that mean? Five years in jail or ten k fine? It's like whatever the judge's discretion could use. So it's like, not the person's <clears throat> choice who gets in trouble. No, no. I thought it was that, and I was like, pay the ten k. Yeah, five k, like two k. You're locked up for a whole year. Five years. What are you talking about? Yeah. So the Michigan House of uh, Representatives passed new hate speech legislation, which criminalizes misgendering. S Misgendering if someone feels terrorized, frightened, or threatened by words with offenders potentially facing five years and blah, blah, blah. Um, so this could make it a felony. The, this was passed by the House on June 20th. Uh, I don't think it's gone farther than that yet. Uh, but yeah, the, it's all this vague language. Like if you intimidate someone and make them feel 
it's like feelings are taken into account and like vibes. Yeah. If the judge deems the vibes not right, then yeah. like five years in jail. So uh, it's unbelievable. It makes uh, it makes pronouns a protected class now. Mm. So I guess that's what they're attempting to do. Um, but yeah, no, I. It's just. Uh, one of the states swirling around America's toilet right now, yeah. trying to do too much. Good luck, citizens of Dearborn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All those Muslims. All people. the Muslims in Dearborn. Um, yeah, a, a reasonable individual to feel terrorized, threatened, frightened, causes them to feel. I don't think we need laws on feeling. Yeah. Did someone get shot? Is it, Did you steal the property? There's no feelings involved in all the rules that I like. But it's crazy because those rules that you like, they don't do those either. So I know. Like, oh, you're stealing the property. You stole the car. You shot the person. No one gets in trouble for that. Yeah. But then we have this stuff where you made someone feel terrorized. Five years. And, you know, and I have a feeling one's going to get, one person's going to get in trouble and the other one's not. The criminals are going to let go. But if you make a trans person feel a certain way, we have to actually come down on you for that. Yeah, there's like that that one quote, like, uh, for you to have a knife is a grave danger. For the criminal to have the knife is minor, you know, yeah. that's expected of them. I don't know. It's some, like, French quote or maybe whatever. But it's like the dystopia, like, where a criminal has a knife, you're a law-abiding citizen, you have a knife. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's trending like England. Like, we've made the joke on the show. Everybody knows the joke. A uh, woman gets nine, uh, 24 months for arguing on Facebook, and then rapist gets six months for assault on 13-year-old. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the exact same principle. Yeah. Well, how you made someone feel, how, you know, they're trying to police thoughts and uh, words and language, and it's not going to end well. Yeah. Judges and the law and courtrooms should have all been one of those things that are, like, above influence and above right or left. Yeah. And we lost that. Uh, Another institution gone. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's move on. Um, well, we don't have to play it, but Jen Psaki mm -hmm. on her show had like this long monologue where she basically said that like the right wingers are convincing Muslims to hate trans people, and that's why there's all these like anti Muslim, anti trans Muslim people. Yeah, we saw we played some of the clips, the the stomping on the flags, the going yeah. against it, right on the nail, Jen. Yeah. Those people that come here and don't assimilate at all and like do their prayers in like the mall. They do the call to prayer over the loudspeakers and they don't change at all. They, they listen to us about trans people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, those people who come to Sweden and they don't shake women's hands and they don't interact with anybody and they do their prayers. Yeah. Yeah. We had to really rope them into hating the LGBTQ. <laughs> That's uh, us, Jen. Um, on right. the money, as always. Yeah. And then this, her viewers, like, do you guys believe that? Or are you not even watching? Or is it just being played at the airport? How does it work? I think it's I think it's just on the airport on mute. Yeah. And, and so Jen <laughs> thinks she can get away with it, but we get the clip. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, the military is very trans. Major trans in the military these days. Yeah. Um, no. Here we have... Uh, we have Admiral Levine, of course. Yep. Then we have this new one, Major Rachel something. Rachel Jones, Major. Rachel Jones. Pure American name, Rachel Jones. <laughs> she, her. <laughs> My pronouns are she, her. He's got all the little cute things on his desk. This is the worst physiognomy I've ever seen. This guy's like a little frumpy, little nothing. There's no standards, I guess, because they are trans, so they're a protected class. They don't have to do workouts. Yeah. Uh, I guess. I don't know. There's a lieutenant colonel, this one, another another trans person, and we have Admiral Levine. So we have all the, and these are not like grunt, frontline foot soldiers. Yeah, you don't go trans uh, on day one of boot camp. This, you, you go after you're in a exactly. leadership position. These people are like lieutenant colonels and majors and general admiral. Yeah, lieutenant colonel Adams Apple reporting for duty, sir. <laughs> Like, these are really high up positions. So, like, the overrepresentation of trans people, trans people are like, what, 0.1% of the population? Yes, yes, even less. And it's like, there's four people right there, all in leadership positions yeah. in our military. You salute the rank, not the woman. <laughs> That's not the man. so bad. Um, major. You know who else is a major? Dick Winters. Easy company. Ever heard of it? And he wasn't even a major when he when he landed on D-Day. Yeah. That and he was led after. the assault on Brecourt Manor. So, yeah. So after he did the D-Day assault, he became a major. 
Yeah, like yeah. after a year on and French and German soil. So I wonder what these trans people did to earn that same accolade. Yeah, took a dick in their butt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. But man, uh, morale. You know, hey, the military is going to have that Bud Light morale. ASAP. Yeah. So. I think we're there already. And mm-hmm. it's a slippery slope. It's another proof of the slippery slope of the slippery slope. You let women in the military. Okay, that sounds good. Don't yeah. ask, don't tell. And then uh, they fight that. Everyone should be in the military. You know, women what else they can help. So you lower the standards. Yep. And then now women are in the military. And then know what else is a woman? A guy who thinks he's a woman. And then you have that person. And then you know what happens? Globalist deep state puppeteers come in and Use that trans person like a pawn to do whatever they want. And it's all because we, the slippery slope got slippery. The slope always gets slippery. Oh, yeah. That's the like the overarching theme and point here. My thing is- uh, It's always going to be a slippery slope. And I think that it accelerates. It goes even slipperier the farther you go down. So yeah, that's what we're learning. Admiral Levine, Major Rachel, Vinman, Lieutenant Colonel, whatever. <laughs> Vinman in there with the <laughs> All right, last piece of trans cringe, the Elijah poll. Yeah, let's see. what, what What's Elijah up to? He's in Australia now. He's, he's, he's in Australia. He did a poll. Shit's turning on Twitter. <laughs> he goes, would you rather have your son be in the KKK or be in the LGBTQ? And then 75% of people said the KKK. And then Xavier from PragerU yeah. says- He goes, I hate it here, face emoji. I'm fighting for my life to convince people that the right isn't full of racists or bigots, but then there's this. Mm, that's just how things are around here, oh, buddy. Oh, <laughs> Xavier, I'm fighting for my life. Nobody asked you to do that, man. I don't know what you're talking that's about. That's just how it is, yeah. man. That's just how things are. Yeah. <laughs> given, given the old school way of thinking, yeah. that's just how things are around well, these parts. Well, let's break this down. Would you rather your son be a flamboyant gay guy taking prep and getting blown out on Fire Island over 4th of July like Rob? Well, actually, that's never mind. What kind of picture are you painting? That's here? that might be slander too. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you rather have that brutal hypothetical that I just mentioned, or like these guys be involved in like the KKK, which now is like maybe in a clubhouse in India in Southern Indiana somewhere? Yeah, they hang out and they drink not Bud Light anymore, but they hang around and they shoot cans with a BB gun. And they and don't like attack or do anything. They, there's nothing. There's nothing going on. It's just a camaraderie of white guys. So would you rather your daughter or your son become a girl? Yeah. Or your son be like really taking seriously the race and IQ and all that, like, you know, whatever the KKK current thing of thinking is? Yeah. I don't know. Ah. Not LGBTQ. I'm not leaning towards yeah. LGBTQ. Well, the answer is not trans. KKK, I can have five grandkids, right? Yeah. And it's like. The KKK, it's like just a matter of pride. Yeah. <laughs> the KKK, you take pride in your race and your heritage, your tradition. Yeah. The LGBT, you take pride in your butt. Yeah. And you're happy about that. Yeah. Um, so that you, was like a bit too. We're not making fun of Xavier. Yeah, we kind of are though. Yeah. Don't, Nobody fucking cares. Yeah, don't be a fucking pussy. Don't be a pussy. Oh, oh, oh man. I'm fighting pers- so hard. Oh, I'm so fighting hard. so hard. <laughs> For the right wing, and everyone wants to be the KKK. <laughs> You're like, we're not making fun of Xavier, and then we got ten times worse. Oh, you man. know, um, should everyone's doing a bit? Don't be a baby. Yeah, everyone's we're just doing a bit. Yo, it's like a on. joke. You're just like trying to make the LGBTs feel bad, so yeah. you pick KKK to show how bad the LGBTs are. We're shitting on them. We're shitting on them. No one's getting tied up. Uh, <laughs> um, do you, should I talk about that gay guy who DM'd me? Yeah. So so some gay guy DM'd me and he goes, hey, uh, and now I actually feel bad because we're doing this on the main show. This was going to be bonus land. Um, but he do you want to do it on bonus land? Sure. Bonus land, you'll hear that story. Sure, sure. Yeah. Fuckastalks.com. And the guy who DM'd me is going to come to bonus land now and be like, oh, man, fuck. Fuckastalks.com. Yep. You'll get that story because we can't tell it here. All right, we're in Urban Decay and we are behind. A little behind. We got it. We got it. Though. We're gonna go quick. It was always gonna be a long epi. Yeah, France. Obviously, shit's popping off in France. Not gonna make it. We have a lot of stuff. We're gonna go through fast because it's old news at this point. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That- oh yeah. That was the other thing that I forgot to list. Yeah. We completely missed a France race race war riot thing. Yeah. And if you think it's anything other than that, then you're not paying attention. You know. Yeah. So look at this first guy with the knife. This is a French. This is a in France a French guy with the knife. Lovely Frenchman. Oh, yeah. 
does not look good. This is crazy because I always thought the French were like. That's a direct descendant of Robespierre. Yeah, I thought they were like wine drinking homosexuals. But this French guy looks like he means business. This French guy looks like he's straight from Algeria, mate. <laughs> All right, next. Um, the country's France is getting reverse George Floyded. Yeah, it looks like uh, George Floyd is smiling Re- yeah. upon this. Reverse George Floyd in France. The guy with the police on top of the police's neck. I kind of think what they're doing here is they're beta testing their third world illegals. Seeing how uh, how resilient they are and how much they can And how disrupt. receptive they are and how much they can get them to like go crazy on everybody. Yeah. And I think that could be the model for 2024 where you have like a Muslim get killed by a cop and then you have all the people you sent over the southern border in the last two years, three years going crazy in the streets alongside with Antifa. And it's like a George Floyd, too. You know, I have faith in the Mexicans that they're not the group to do this. But I think all the people like these types came across with the Mexicans on our southern border. Oh, for sure. For sure. We have a ton of these Muslims. For sure. For sure. That are not happy. But I have faith in the Mexicans that they don't do they don't engage in this type of blind racial shit like this. You know, Yeah, they wouldn't. But if we if it was a Muslim person, because they kind of they're losing the Muslims to the right wing in a way with all the LGBT stuff. Yeah. Like all the trans shit and all the kids stuff. They're probably worried about that. How do you get them back? You George Floyd, a Muslim innocent person, then everyone goes crazy and they kill everyone and then they vote Democrat. I don't know. Is that even how it works? Mm, I don't know. It's it's a dirty game, but this is like exhibit A, why you have the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment exists and it'll never go away in America because these people, some of the shit they were doing, stealing the bus, just lighting shit on fire. I saw that fat guy walking away with cooking oil. Just mm-hmm. stealing. They're looting. Um, I saw a guy get his hands cut off and his bones smashed because he was trying to stop them from destroying his car. I missed that one. I never saw it. Hands that. fully cut off. They were next to his body. Then we have this lady right here. We'll just play it in the background. Yeah. Um, we have this lady on the ground begging the military police not to do anything because no, no. She, she doesn't want to be racist. Please do not go fight. Please. Yeah. Oh, no. We need to not get the Muslim people mad at us because they're already mad at us and they're already destroying the whole city and the whole country. Yeah. So um, that's why it's like I don't take political advice from women. Yeah. You know? I'm listening to women, lady. They don't know how – what it took. And and you know how we've always had that running bit of uh, people get too far away from how food is made? And yeah, then they start yeah. doing trans shit and they start getting their brain all wired. People are also, and especially women in America, the women voting bloc, um, they're too far away from having to fight for a country, having yeah. to fight for your existence, you know? Yeah. So we're too far away and it's, no, let everything, let's be the multi-ethnic whatever, that we're the melting yeah. pot. They're and it's like, no, we're, from... we're not, we weren't the melting pot. Exactly. Yeah, we were some, but we were 90% white in 1985. Mm-hmm. America was 90% white in 1985, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like the melting pot, sure, there were some and there were always, you know, refugees and little cliques, but we're not, we, we never yeah. were that. And there was a melting pot of like Italians and Irish and Germans. Yeah. <laughs> it was it, a different type of fondue. Exactly. All Europeans. Yeah. Um, but it yeah, it was a different kind of fondue. It was a very European yeah. fondue. It was a very European fondue. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, we're, we're both too far away from a lot of how the food was made and we're becoming too far away from having to fight for your own country, for your own yeah. land. So remember back in the day when the women used to draw the fake lines on their legs cause they couldn't have nylon whatever's on our, their stockings cause they needed it for parachutes. So they would draw fake ones. That was them, you know, closer to how the food is made. Yeah. Riv- doing riveters, Rosie, yeah, the riveter. Yeah. If she, they were involved. Yeah, she was kind of made up. Now before. everyone got real comfortable, and all those people died and stopped telling everyone what could be if things go south. Yeah, which is not good. Uh, there was this clip right here of a dad who caught his son riding in France, and he took him back and put him in the car. This is good action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, it is too. Got it. Pretty good. Love to see it. And then we also have some nationalist groups popping up in France, protecting the streets and stuff. So that's good to see. Yeah. It's good to see. Now let's go into Urban Decay, back at home. What's going on here? Things are better here. We've got our own problems. we got our own problems, but it looks like one of them has been solved. The looters saw the light, and they returned the clothes. Our looters. Look at this. All of our looters are putting the clothes back. 
They said, wow, America's not really racist. And they put all these racks <laughs> back. We've like already done this. Yeah, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah. in seriousness, we do have another looting. Uh, this dry cleaner got looted. Yeah. So uh, I, I want to preface this a little bit. Like we, we show stealing all the time. We show different tactics. We show different things. And just when I think we're at the tip of the iceberg or we've climbed to the top of Mount Everest and we can look and say, wow, we've lost it all. They do something new. So this is a dry cleaner, as you can tell by the uh, individual plastics on all the jackets and shirts. These guys take the whole rack from the dry cleaner. From some nice Asian lady. And it's, yeah, it's probably a family owned Asian lady shop. And everyone used to always say, oh, you steal from Walmart. They have insurance, so they can handle it. They're oh, a, they're a billion dollar corporation. It's like you stole everyone's dry cleaning from a local place. It's like you just stole like one or two shirts from a bunch of people in town. You just stole Mike's shirt. Jeff has a, oh, yeah. a an interview. Jeff's got to go to the wedding next week. He's, his suit's gone. They're, and these are all like, these aren't even new clothes. These are older used clothes that are getting clean because they're like higher end clothes, probably for work. And you just stole a rack of people's work clothes, all different sizes, all different brands. That's where we're at now. And you just took it. And, and we're not even at rock bottom. I'm I'm waiting to see yeah. what comes next, you know? Uh, yeah, I want reparations for that. I'm gonna leave a little I'm gonna have to do a little running tally this uh this urban decay. And anytime I see something I don't like, I want reparations for it. Exactly. I'm I'm i I'm thinking we need some major reparations that we gotta get to. But so uh again, the cutting edge of theft and urban decay, the dry cleaners. Let's how about how about the next cutting edge? This guy. Street rat, drug addict, presumably, brings in the blowtorch to get past the plastic shoplifting locks. So he's using a blowtorch to melt plastic in a store. I want reparations for that. Yeah, you know those plastic fumes that you get from melting plastic with a 300 degree blowtorch? Those are great. And then the fire's going. It's like this guy, these guys are watching him. This guy should be knocked out. He's doing arson. Yeah. He could, and uh, oh, no, I trust, I trust the drug addicted, uh, broad daylight thief to know when the fire got a little out, too out of hand. It's like, yeah. no, he's your whole operation's at risk here, Walgreens. So, yeah. and look at his fat legs. He's got those fat fentanyl legs. Mm. Something goes on there when you're on the street. Yeah. Bad prank. Quick trial, death penalty. You Anyone know. Anyone else want to <laughs> steal? <laughs> you know me, yeah. There's a Hennessy Thieves, too. Same thing. We'll just play it in the background. Yeah. These people are stealing Hennessy. I want reparations for that. Yep. And you stole the dry cleaning. Yep. So I'm making a list. I'm, I'm making checking a it list. twice. I'm checking it twice. Tallying up this bill. Um. All right. Let's go to the guy who got attacked, then calls the cops, and then the cops arrest the guy, and then the guy starts crying because the person being arrested was arrested is black. and charged with simple assault and terroristic threats. Following his arrest, he was transported to the DeKalb County Jail. Let's go to the squad car, please. Okay, that way. Why? There he is, nice young black man. Why is it happening? I'm being arrested? Yes. yes. For what? For what? I'll be with you in just one second. Are you, are you arrested? Mm-hmm. I, I just want to speak to Bob. But still, he, um, I will need for you to fill out a statement for him. I don't want him arrested. I just want to leave this alone. No, but he had a weapon on him and it was terrorist threats. Brandishing is not a crime with a knife. Brandishing is brandishing. only a crime for a gun. Terroristic threats, though, sir. Because he said die to me and had his knife out? What, all that was done. This guy's got the no fucking everything. survival instinct. And he starts to cry. Get, let me get a I statement. I thought you were going to arrest him. I wouldn't call. I just wanted to leave this alone. I understand, he's like at a park. But still have a job to do. Now he's going to sit. He's going to think I'm doing this because I'm white and he's black. <laughs> or he's homeless and I'm not. I don't want but did that. He, but did he do what he did? Yeah, but I don't want him thinking I did it because he's in whatever situation he's in. I, I just want him to leave us alone. I doubt that. What a pussy. I just want right to knock back, that okay? guy out. He, he, so he doesn't want the guy to get arrested. He starts crying. He goes, he's going to think I arrested because arrested he's black. We missed so much good shit this week. Didn't you? Didn't he pull a gun, a knife out, and say I die? Didn't he do that? Yeah. It's all right. That's the kind of, that's the kind of guy who's like, I forgive you, as the knife is being twisted around in his heart. 
What a fucking moron. No survival instinct. And that guy's too far away from fighting for a country. He's too far away from how the food's made. He doesn't understand how quick someone can nick a jugular and yeah. end your life. I didn't want him. It's okay. <laughs> He's bleeding out. I'm bleeding that much. <laughs> I'm not, it's, see? See? No, don't arrest him. Um, so, uh, you know, some people are beyond saving. Some people are beyond, uh, you know, having that dog in them, that instinct, uh, mm. self-preservation, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, this mindset. Exactly. This mindset plus a Soros DA is God forbid. globalist parlay of a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, and that's why there are no more Walgreens in San Francisco. Yeah, this is why we literally can't have nice things because people don't even want to see criminals locked up. Yeah, 94 crime bill. The real red pill, 94 crime bill, wasn't far enough. Yeah, we need more people in jails. We need yep. more jails. Yep. Build them. Yeah. Um, exactly. This guy crying because he doesn't want the guy getting arrested who threatened you with a knife to think he's getting arrested because he's black. Yeah. It's like, aren't you a fucking idiot? Didn't he just threaten to kill you? You stupid bitch. All right. Well, he's beyond saving. Um, and we might see his, that's the kind of guy who like, we might see his obituary sometime soon. Like, oh, he picked up a hitchhiker who was down on his luck and got stabbed eight times in the neck. Yeah. You know, that type of guy doesn't learn. So the next clip is the guy who kills three random people randomly. Stranger. Stranger randomly. enters. Prosecutors say 74-year-old Bruno DeMore, his 73-year-old wife Gilda, and her 97-year-old mother Lucina, Lucia Arpino were stabbed and beaten to death. Investigators say the accused killer, Christopher Ferguson, randomly targeted the victim's home on Broadway in Nonantum, breaking in through a basement window. That's good. You know how it is. Random. Yeah. The random three people beat and killed. It's always random. Oh, stranger randomly kills three white people. After saying, I hate white people for who knows what reason. We may never know his motives. Yeah, unknown reasons. So like, did, Every time. Did any of you guys hear about this? Like, w w this didn't really register anywhere. Didn't hear about it at all. Local news, you know, nothing crazy. But, you know, black people got lynched in 1800. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they want reparations. It could for, be related to that. For that. But this guy, you know, no biggie here. <laughs> the three white people dead. Yeah, Three, uh, both you, sides have problems. Yeah, so uh, I want reparations for that. Um, I want reparations for that as well. Yeah, and then so should we go to? I guess that kind of leads us into the euphemism game. Exactly. So uh, we saw this. Everybody saw this. I'm sure. Stranger stabs family's 11 year old dog to death, basically eviscerating it while unprovoked. While owner played pickleball. Oh, stranger, stranger, random, stranger. Uh, yeah. Golden Retriever. Yeah. It's like and everything is a stranger or oh, random actor, yeah. teens, or Scholars. young people. Young people attack old women. Here's, teens go. Here's another one. The trans shooter who shot five people, uh -huh. uh, killed five and injured two kids in Philadelphia. They called him a computer nerd. Yeah. The computer nerd just started firing. What is that? What happened? And then there's another know. one with the teens not going to um, the rec center in St. Louis. Yeah, that's that's kind of uh, a little different, but yeah. St. Louis expands rec center hours to combat teen violence, but the teens don't show. They're out doing the violence. Yeah, they love the game. They teens. love being out there driving in a car with, with a gun under the floorboard. They love it. St. Louis, city officials extended hours at two recreation centers this weekend in hopes of keeping teens out of trouble. On the first night, there was a selfie booth, a DJ, and even African drumming. One thing was missing, the teens. No one came. No one likes that. We like shooting the Glock. We like the Glock with the switch. Blick, blick. Yeah. <laughs> I just got my library card on. Dang. Yeah. And then this is like this stuff of like the people who are getting killed. It sounds like similar to the COVID experimental, you know what, when everyone was just randomly dying, died suddenly. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to die suddenly in America, you either got an experimental, you know what, in your arm or you got black violenced. <laughs> That's how you die suddenly. It's pretty simple. I mean, it's not that hard. Um, yeah, the teens at the gu at the gun center, like, oh yeah, those Swedish teens. Exactly. They really love their gun violence. All right, let's do last clip. This will be uh, transitioning to uplifting gold. So it's in between Urban Decay and uplifting gold. The okay. nine month pregnant woman shoots back at the bad guys and kills them with the yeah, gun. Yeah, uplifting decay. Uplifting decay. Pregnant woman just standing there at the gas station. Very pregnant. This guy with no front of his car, no front bumper, standing in a weird, aggressive way. Looks like he's looking for a confrontation. 
Not oh, good. some aggressive hand signals. I don't know what he's up to. He's on his way over. Yeah, better go fight the pregnant woman. She's digging around her purse. Oh, he tries to hit the guy, and boom, shot. That's what you get. Try oh, he had a gun, too. He had yeah. a gun, too. That's what you get. Yep, finish him. Execute that, him. That's why you got to leave one in the chamber. It's like you're carrying around, and you have safety on, and it's not cranked. Oh, and he hits him in the head. Good. I'd love to see that. Yeah. What the fuck were you just trying to do, buddy? Yeah. Now die on the sidewalk, you know? Mm-hmm. Some people, you know, you're too far from food. You're too far from this. Some people just need to die on the sidewalk. Did you see that uh, pastor who Garbage Human posted who goes, some people, man, some of these kids, he's a black pastor, and he's yeah. talking about gun violence, and he goes, some of these kids, man, they're beyond saving. They don't have what it's in them. Some of them need to go to sleep. Forever, <laughs> he just goes and like that's uh, true. Some people are beyond repair. If you've lived a life of uh, getting the blicky, getting the switch, mm-hmm. all you know is that hood life and running from cops and shooting people. You, you're, you're beyond saving. You go to sleep yeah. forever, David. But David Hogg would be like, "No, you need to, you need to die. You need to let this guy kill you. Yeah. His guns are bad. You need to let this guy kill you." Honestly, some people need to die on the pavement. Yep, it's just how it is. Hey, let's move on to Uplifting Gold before we get too down and upset. And let's keep it on time. First couple of uplifting, uplifting Gold, the dolphins and the girl balancing on them. Looks like some sort of synchronized dancer lady, synchronized swimmer. Dolphin knows yep. she wants to step. Steps on the dolphin. The dolphin carries her. Isn't that a great clip? That's nice. No complaints here. No yep. issues with this at all. Yep. That's a good situation. Are you trying to make a point? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do Llama as the best man at the wedding. This was my favorite shit. Um, this they, is up there. They dressed up a llama and they folded his arms like he's a yeah. real guy. The key is the arms and more specifically the hands. Yeah. <laughs> and so look at this. He's sitting. He's in the picture. He's got the hands. He's the gloves calm. too. Yeah. That's the key. I can. I mean, I would hire this guy to have him around the office. And here's my favorite angle. <laughs> yeah. Look at that fucking torso lean where can you ever get that that's like my favorite shit ever i would have that around here at the office this is our associate this is our associate l llama yeah um all right the retired army pilot saves the rc plane these kids are flying an rc plane it crashes into a tree they grab it they bring it down to the ground and everyone's happy isn't that great? They return to the kid. That's good American shit. You never thought you'd get saved by a random SIG smoking helicopter pilot, so God bless. That's what it's about. Um, the kid flips over the fence to catch the baseball. Robbing the home run. Makes the catch. Catch. Boom. Flip. flip. Bench, back, broken. Wow. 19 years old, though, so it's fine. Or 16, so yep. you don't get hurt for two weeks after this. Yep. And there he is. He's got yeah, it. He's got it. That's nice. Uh, the favorite tractor group. This is uplifting because it shows that there's nice American people out there still connected to the food and how it's made. These kids are not far. favorite tractor of all time? 60-30. Nice. Sir, uh, what's your favorite tractor of all time? John Deere 6030. Hey, what's your favorite tractor of all time? A John Deere 4320. A John Deere AR. 1954 Model 70. Uh, John Deere 4020. John Deere 8300. John Deere 2010. Sir, uh, what's your favorite tractor of all time? Uh, it's got to be the 4440. All right, we get it. John Deere 6030. John Deere 6030. John Deere 6030. Yeah, remember it, and then it, now I have a favorite tractor. Yep, smart. And these kids, as we've said, not too far disconnected from how the food is made. Yep. So they're grounded in reality. Nobody's trans here. They just have a favorite tractor. Yeah. No one's even... Isn't life beautiful? There's not even any gay sucking going on. Over very little. Yeah. Very little. Everyone's just a normal person who's going to get a wife and have children and drive the John Deere 6030. All right. What do you want to go next? Last clip is our outro with no music because it's copyrighted, but we have our last clip outro of the guy on the side of the road getting the American flag that fell yep. July 4th, passed on Tuesday, but technically it's still July 4th weekend. It's Friday. Enjoy your weekends. BLTs and Arnold Palmer's. Make sure you guys leave reviews for the Blue Jay Productions. 
Uh, yeah, Blue Jay Media, I believe. Let me check really quick. Links for the description for that. They named the thing Snarf Snarf Ovanian. Let's leave them some comments on their Instagram. Let's follow them on Instagram and let's leave them some Google reviews. Everything is linked in the description. Blue Jay Media out of Phoenix, Arizona. Blue Jay Media out of Phoenix, out of Arizona. Did I say that right? Blue Jay Media out of Phoenix, Arizona. Yes. That is the end of our episode. Another Flunkus Talks in the Books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all Tuesday. the good stuff. See you Tuesday. Notifications on. Notifications on. Tuesday episode. 30 more minutes starting right now on FluckusTalks.com. Join today. If you join and send me a screenshot, I will send you some sort of something. I'll follow you back. I might give you a t-shirt. I'm going to do a random thing. I'm going to spin the wheel. And whatever you land on, I'll try and give you something. Join FluckusTalks.com. It goes a long way. We're not censored there. It's a great thing. We built our own platform. Extra show dropping now. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one.